time. It's getting about that time that we uh, get started in our worship service, and we welcome you. We welcome those who are watching us live stream and thank them for doing so. Good to see each of you. We'll start as folks are making their way in from Sunday school. And uh, if you don't have a good Sunday school class, we'd like to hook you up with good Bible study uh, so that you can attend. We've got a class for you as you come. We're glad that you're here. Please uh, read the bulletin uh, for the announcements and things that are listed there. A couple of things that I will emphasize next Sunday morning. On the 18th, we'll have our annual uh, budget uh, meeting and uh, church business meeting to adopt uh, the proposed 2023 budget. There's a copy back there if you haven't received it. I thank the, the girls for handing them out this morning. But if you haven't received one of these, please get one. And uh, you'll have time to be looking it over. If you've got any questions, you can see Miss Judy Roten. You can see Natalie, our financial administrator. Judy is our uh, chairman of finance. You can see me if you've got questions or something on anything concerning that. Um, that's been through the finance committee time or two and, and church council a couple times as we've tried to refine our budget as much as possible to do that. Also every month, once a month, um, you'll notice on the back of the bulletin we always have a financial statement, a summary of our finances and budget. So that's always there every month of the previous month. And I hope you appreciate that as we get those things there. Kind of keeps you informed how things are going and uh, things like that. So next Sunday morning, right after our worship service, we'll have a brief uh, business meeting to adopt our proposed 2023 budget meeting. Also, uh, Miss Jeannie, I don't see Miss Jeannie uh, around, but Phil, let Jeannie know our corporate corporation will meet just briefly. It takes about three minutes to come in and uh, enter into a business and to close that business, we, we um, are incorporated as a church for this purpose so that if the church ever got sued, um, then it wouldn't uh, cause problems for any of us personally. It would go against the church property. So we are incorporated in that sense so that that protects uh, the body of believers within the church and it just goes towards all those things so that's why a church uh, incorporates in case somebody's ever wondered so oh, i'm not going to an incorporation thing and all that well we're incorporated as a non-profit uh, entity so letting you know but we have to as a corporation meet once to a year and Jeannie rom is the uh, chairperson of that committee um the second thing is um <clears throat> on December the 21st, a week from Wednesday, we'll have a special service on that Wednesday night at 6.30, and we hope you'll plan to come and to be a part of that. Um, it'll be, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. We'll have some Christmas songs and things that we'll be singing, and that will be at 6.30 on the 21st on Wednesday night and right before Christmas. And, of course, you saw in there there's no Sunday school on the... Uh, Christmas Sunday, Christmas falls on Sunday this year, and also on New Year's Day falls on uh, Sunday, so no Sunday school on those two things. So you can read the bulletin for the other listings there. Uh, several folks we need to lift up to the Lord in prayer today, and I'm sure this doesn't get everyone, but it gets what I have knowledge of, and generally on the back we'll have a uh, prayer list, but this Sunday is the financial summary statement. Um, but we want to pray for uh, Brother Bill Anderson. He's home from the hospital, and uh, everything went well, the procedure and things that was done. Charles and Danny White both have COVID. Lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Doug Watts in Kentucky. Uh, Janice Johnson, continue praying for her as she gets different treatments and uh, things. Uh, pray for Janice and her well-being. She, I know they were here last Sunday. Pray for Deborah's family. Uh, we were just in Kentucky, and uh, her mom and dad has got sick. Her brother has come down this week with COVID, so pray for them if you would. Helen Wright is home. She's not uh, well today. 
uh, Cookie Cole, continue remembering Sister Cookie, and, uh, and seeing the doctor and the treatments that they can get everything lined out there. Uh, pray for Brenda Bull, she's not feeling well. And Daniel and Paige, as they'll be traveling to Houston to uh, the MD Anderson place, is that the, like the 20th, 21st, Daniel? 27th, two days after Christmas? Okay, brother. So we'll want to pray for you guys as you're heading there. And we, we want to pray for Patty Fielding family. Um, Patty uh, passed away uh, this past this week, and uh, uh, Rick, her husband, is here today. And Rick, we're glad to meet you, brother, not under the circumstances. And our church will be open for uh, a memorial service on Friday evening. If any of you want to come, if you knew the, know the family, uh, Rick uh, and Patty Fielding. Patty went home to be with the Lord. She was a Christian. And uh, I tell you, that's always a great comfort to be able to let someone go to know when you know the Lord. I'll be preaching a little bit on that here later. But got a call from a good friend of Rick's, a neighbor. And they asked, so Rick Nim's going to have a memorial service here Friday from 4 till 6. If you'd like to come and to attend that time. Uh, I know they would appreciate that and getting to know the family and we welcome to our community as well. So we want to lift all of them. Rick, we'll be praying for you, my brother, and all of you to do that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just want to thank you that you know everything and it's all in your hands. We just ask you for understanding of the things that we don't understand and in those things, we ask you to help us in our faith to increase it and give us trust to be able to know that, Lord, it's going to be all right. And I pray your blessings upon Brother Rick and upon his family, Lord, and the neighbors, the friends, and give them comfort during this time. And for all those that we've mentioned that are sick in our church, uh, the Pendletons that are uh, in Virginia that have COVID, I pray you'll be with them, Father. That seems to be going around. And uh, I just pray once again that we could just be strong and you'll see us through this. And we're not going to live in fear, but we're going to live by faith and trust you in everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, fellas. Well, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's had a good week. We're entering an exciting time, uh, if you're a Christian, where we look back and reflect on the birth of Christ, our Savior. And so anyway, we're going to kick off this morning with some Christmas songs, and everybody join in and sing with us. In Luke chapter 2, verse 15, we read about the account where the angels had came and visited the shepherds in the field. And they had left, and the shepherds looked at each other and said, Let us go into Bethlehem to see this thing which the Lord has shown us. And so, uh, as we enter into worship, uh, you all stand as we sing. <coughs>
there's some new faces here this morning, and I'd just like to say welcome. It's good to have you with us today. You all may be seated. <clears throat> Continue to sing with us. <clears throat> spread his love and his message. <clears throat> practiced only one but I was going to do all three but that's okay because we only practiced one so no problem I tell you what this morning we came up here and Greg was at the soundboard and Lauren at the piano and we were practicing these songs and I tell you what I just felt the Lord pass by and it was so good and he's here today and uh, I've got a song that I'd like to sing for y'all it's one of my favorite Christmas songs and um You turned it on here? Okay. Um, so you all just listen to the words, and I hope you get a blessing. On the second verse, it says, He knows our needs. To our weakness is no stranger. And that is the truth. And I just like to say, um, I, I want to dedicate this song to my son. I hope he's watching right now. If he's not, he's, he said he would watch it tomorrow. And I'd like to ask you all to say a special prayer for him and keep him in your hearts. He's had a few rough years, 
and he's had a real struggle, but he's really working hard, and um, he's trying to get his life straightened out. And uh, just remember him in your prayers. <clears throat> oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long My sweet wife, thank you, Deborah. God bless you. Thank you, Lauren, for your accompaniment and playing. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them, if you would please, to the book of Psalm. We'll be reading Psalm chapter 91, verse 1. I want to encourage you to read the entire psalm later on. We'll read Psalm chapter 
91, verse 1. The title of the message today is On the Move. On the Move. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, let that just, just think about the verse. Look at it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Pray with me. Thank you, Father, for your divine word. Help us to understand it as it was then, as it is now, and make the application to our hearts. Lord, empower us through the power of the Holy Spirit, and anyone here that does not know Jesus, may that be the day today they come under the precious blood, in whose name we pray, amen. I think you'll admit with me that life is full of changes. And for the most part, most of us move on physically, emotionally, and mentally. You notice I said for the most part. <laughs> well, we won't name any names, but anyway. But there are people who just, you know, most of us, we just have to, by the process, move on physically, don't we? Whether we like it or not. But then that part that comes for the emotional part. Oh, some are still dealing with so many different things and problems within their life. Uh, struggling. Emotionally. Still going back to things that happened in their childhood and, oh, but you don't know my life. You don't know this and that. And, and you know, it's kind of like somebody says when you're driving a car and, and you're trying to go forward, but you continue to look into the rearview mirror looking at what's behind you and you're surely going to crash. Instead of looking out the windshield. You're just driving along, looking at the rearview mirror. This is your life when you're looking back, and you're allowing, and you're not able to move on emotionally. Blaming people for stuff that's happened, done holding grudges, carrying all kinds of things. For the most part, most people move on, but not all people. Physically, emotionally, uh, mentally, somehow we get called up into that to where we can't grow mentally. We, Paul said, when I was a child, I put away childish things. When I became a man, or when I was a man, when I became a man, I put away childish things. When he grew, when he matured to know that. So when, when we look at our life to say that we should grow physically, emotionally, and mentally within our life, and I think you would say, yes, I agree, Brother Odell, I think we should do that. But in the scripture here, as you'll notice, according to this verse, we need to consider the importance of moving on spiritually as well. You've heard me say so many times that people say, you know, uh, they remember when they get saved, they get saved, got saved in a revival, they got saved over uh, years ago when there's a child or this or that. And, and the, the trouble in our world today is that we have people who say, I am a Christian, I know Christ. But when it comes to testimony, when it comes to experience within your life, all that you can share is, and, and thank God you can share this and hope that is true. Not shaking the preacher's hand, not joining some church. Denomination church will not save you, will not take you to heaven. Personal experience with Jesus Christ. Being born again, being saved. So you know what I'm talking about. So you've got to, that's the main, and looking at it to see, to know. And only you can know. You can't say mom, dad, husband, wife. Uh, you know I did that. You know I did this. If you know it. But the problem is, is moving on growing spiritually. 
That's the thing. Most people just get hung. We're still hung up on the fact of all we say is, I thank God for saving me. That's wonderful. How about a testimony today? You've been saved 40 years. We are thankful for that. But does he provide for you? Is he your protector? Is there all kinds of things within your life that walks? Is he a living God that he continues, not just saving you? Because don't you see this a lot of times with us in the church and those the world sees it? Is they see a struggle. We saw it when the pandemic hit, did we? Amen. Oh, we saw it in in the 2020 elections, and we saw it in the 22 elections with people. We say people who are Christians in politics, we see that when our faith is shattered and and wondering, or we see all the plagues and and this China virus and all the different things, whatever you call it, corona. I don't know if we're on number five or six on the variants. I've lost track. But in all the different things of looking at and saying, but here it is that we are supposed to be in Christ. All things are possible to them that believe. We are in Christ. Where is our faith? We're walking, knowing, believing, trusting. But here we're filled with anxieties and concerns. All the different things. No wonder the world looks at it. And no wonder now that the population in America is down to about 30% that say they actually believe in God and Jesus Christ. Christian nation, national facts, only about 30%. And you know, the sad part of that is, it's not all 30% really are saved because they believe in some form of God or what I'm saying, believing in Jesus as who, but you have to believe in the divine son. So I think the psalmist is here saying that when we look at this and understand in in the scriptures to see that life is full of changes and we do need to learn to be able to be on the move or to move on in our life, not just physically, emotionally, mentally, but spiritually. So I want you to consider three things with me in this text today. Look at three ways that we need to move on. Number one, I already mentioned part of this. We need to move in. He, look at that verse. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Look at, you see, you have a dwelling place physically. A home where you spend most of your time. If you're a Christian, you're invited to move into the presence of God. And you, you and I are to dwell in the presence of God. And you might ask, say, well, how do I do that? How do I dwell in the presence of God? Number one, first of all, you'll notice, through prayer. I've had people say, I've even had, you know, I've been a pastor 48, going on 49 years, whatever. Going on, I'm still going on. Preaching the gospel. I thank God for his calling and, and for the dynamics of his word. And, and that he's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it just it never gets old. We hear the Christmas story this year. It just don't, it never gets old. I, I love hearing, we'll hear in, in April about the resurrection of Christ and his death on the cross. Never gets old in the Bible to understand, to look at this. And you say, but prayer. And I've heard so many people say that, well, I just can't pray. Prayer is communication. It is you're speaking to God when you look at it. In, in John chapter 15, verse 7, it says, if you abide in me in my words, uh, then if they abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. You see, if you abide in me, dwelled in the place of God, prayer is communicate. What do you need from God? Now, be careful that when you say, Lord, I need this, I need that, I need this, because the Bible says, where there's two or three gathered in my name, whatever they ask shall be given. But there's that closure part as Jesus prayed in the garden. says, not my will, Lord, but thine, because you better be careful for what you ask for, for you may get it. And then sometimes after you get it, you wish you didn't have it. Because sometimes we ask for wrong things, don't we? 
You know, we say wrong things that when we come. I've had mature Christians, supposed to be mature Christians, who have been deacons and Bible, Bible teachers and things in the church. No wonder that we suffer from the lack of spiritual maturity within the family of God. And don't blame somebody else for this because the Bible says some of you ought to be teachers. Hello? You've been in church, you've been a Christian a long time, you know the Bible. That's why sometimes you feel you don't have to come to church. I already know that. I've already heard that. We, we, can, we can discuss all kinds of different things, but it is the calling that if God calls you to be so, then do so. If God leads you, because not everybody, that he calls us to different things within our life. But they say, preacher, I can't pray. I said, what? You're a deacon of the church. I don't pray publicly. Do you pray privately? When you pray privately, that's practice. So you ought to be, when you, when you talk to the Lord privately, that ought to be help to make you comfortable. Amen. As you're praying, and when you're praying publicly, it's just to be a mediator, to interact in a prayer, to say a prayer, and you're not praying it for somebody to hear. You know, you don't care about what somebody else hears. Talk to God. Amen. Talk to the Lord. Don't worry about what somebody else thinks about what you're saying. If you're praying from your heart, and that's what God wants us to do. So get comfortable. Come into the presence of God in prayer. And you also then move into God's presence, not just through prayer, but through praise. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 through 17 says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks in his name. I like verse 16 as well. But do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. And don't just think of this as in political realm, but think of this in the spiritual realm. We pastors and preachers, those that are called of God teachers, we have a responsibility for what we preach and teach and share in the gospel. That's why it's got to be about Jesus. It's got to be about the Bible. It's not about me. It's not about, I can tell you things I wished I had done or I hadn't done and may learn and you can, may help you to grow through my failures, through my mistakes. And I can say, I can tell you this, this is how God operates in my life, but I tell you, that you, in your own experience, stuff, and you can't pray like I pray, you can't talk like I talk and believe or, or experience the same thing I experience. You can experience the same Savior, Jesus, for there's only one. But to come, and when I was in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, the old regular Baptist, you're probably not familiar with the old regular Baptist, but the old regular Baptists, uh, and part of their belief, there's primitive. I, I want to tell you something. You don't have to worry about all the other denomination of the world, Methodist and Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic, and all. You know, we got a plenty of denominations. You know what don denominations are the beliefs of people who establish those based, they take from Scripture and surround it with, not, not all. Some are not just in denominations like uh, Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses. They have other books that establishes that, which are actually classified as cults, not evangelical churches. But that, that's not me. That, that's just what is said. That's, that's not me just saying it's a fact. So there's plenty of denominations, but you know there's over 90-something Baptists, uh, different kinds of Baptists. It blew me away when I was studying that in church history. Years and years ago, when I was looking, I said, you got to be kidding me. And I was looking through all these different things of saying the affiliations of what people did. And, and I can understand because you get two or three people together and they can form a Baptist church. You know, and, and, and that's the thing. Before long, they'll split. There's more than three of them. But it just it gets into the place to where you, 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 you begin to understand and say, looking at all these denominations, they have all their different sets of beliefs and things. And, but you see, this is the danger of preaching the gospel. 
to give the word of God, to be true. And when we become slack, when we start tickling people's ears, the reason that a lot of churches are in trouble today is because the preachers of yesterday stopped preaching the gospel. And today the prosperity of the church is based upon recreation and entertainment more than it's based upon the preaching of the gospel and sin stomping, devil running, all the different things, the shed blood of Christ to get saved, confession and repentance of sin because that's what it means to come into the family of God. That when you come to the place of prayer, that you're not just praying and asking for a new automobile or a house, because when you come into prayer, you come into the holy presence of God, and at that point, you just want to lift up holy hands and praise Him. When you're in the presence of God, and I want to tell you, there's just not enough lifting our hands and praising the Lord. You can do that in the class. Say, well, brother, should we? And that's Pentecostal. That's a, no denomination. Hey, that's Bible. I mean, that's the Bible. Don't, don't worry about what somebody says. If you feel it, do it. Don't do it because I do it. I remember when I pastored First Baptist Church of Festus, Crystal City, down south of St. Louis. And at the time, they were running uh, about three. When I first went there, about 320, I think they had in church, 340 in Sunday school. And on that First Sunday that I, I, I was going there to preach a trial sermon, and I was sitting up here. There's no seat. I'll fall down here. And I was just sitting up here, and we were singing songs. I was waiting to get up and to preach, and we're on the radio and the different things. I closed my eyes because I don't want to look at any deadbeats out there in the church. <laughs> or somebody's mad, or they're trying to check out what I'm wearing, or, or say, wonder who, where his, who's his wife, or whatever, all the different things, and just, I didn't want to get distracted by anybody that was feeling bad, doing all these things, and so I just closed my eyes, praying to the Lord, listen to the songs, and just praising, singing, and worshiping in my spirit. Now, I didn't grow up in a, I didn't learn that from anybody. It's something that God instilled in me as that old song says, when he touched me and made me whole. And ever since then, so if I can't, when I go into an old dead church, I just close my eyes. Now, wait a minute now. Don't think for one moment, just because I close my eyes, that you are dead. But I just want you to know that that, I mean, I just, I want to do that because I don't want to be distracted or worry about if somebody else, I'm not doing it because somebody else, but if I feel it in my heart, when I come into the presence of God and I'm praying to the Lord, I'm talking to him and I hear him speaking to me. And then I can begin to worship him. And someday it's lifting my voice and it's just lifting. And I may do this or I may do this. And I remember there at First Baptist Church when we went into a, a sitting room of about 200 of the church in the library. And they, the, the church was going to get a chance to ask me questions about what I believed as they interviewed before they called me as their pastor. God had already called me to preach. And it was a matter of calls pastor and I remember one guy way back in the back, and they took, he held his hand up, they took him the microphone. Well, preacher, I noticed uh, several times you were holding your hand up. He said, now, why was that? And I called his name, and I said, well, brother, so and so. I said, it's like this. I just envisioned that when my little granddaughter, three or four years old, comes running to her papa, and I see her at a distance, she comes running, and she's got those hands up. I want to tell you something. I can't help but to reach down and pick her up and feel them little arms go around my neck, and I'm in heaven right there. And she begins, and I begin to love on her, and she begins to love on me. I want to tell you something that we haven't got to the place enough in the body of Christ that God is our Heavenly Father, that we're a part of the family of God, and we're supposed to come in to the dwelling place to dwell in His presence. We're not just here having a social club. We're not here and thinking about and marking off our checklist, what we're going to do as soon as we get out of church and all that. We've come in here to worship God. And when we come in this presence, it just you want to, 
You just want to lift up your hands and praise Him. When you feel it, don't wait for somebody. Don't just start doing it. It's like I, talk, I had a guy pick me up the other day. Took Deborah's car in over at the Ford place for a recall. By the way, the Lord's got a recall on some Christians. Amen. And he's come in for a little repair work. And I took her car in, and this old boy, as soon as I got in, he was handing me a track. Had me in the front seat. Oh, he thought he'd done had, had him one. He's going to win. I said, I praise the Lord. He's with him. But he's one, he's one of them. Uh, he was in that AG movement thing, and that's okay with me because you've already seen I'm Baptocostal. And, and, and I'm more about being a Christian. I am about Baptist or, or whatever, and Methodist, whatever denomination. I'm a child of God. But he, was, he got to talk, and then he got to talk about his experience. I asked if he was washed in the blood, filled with the Spirit. I believe in demons. I believe speaking in tongues. I believe in uh, casting out all devils and all this stuff and healing and all that. And I said, but I, I may not believe it the way you believe it. I believe it the way the Bible says. So he goes in and tells me about speaking in tongues. And he began, I'd already, I was getting ready, I'm just getting ready to tell him. And he starts telling me how to speak in tongues. And he says, like a little baby. And you go, dad, 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 ba, 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 ba. you know, go like that. I said, wait a minute. I said, I've said for a long time. And I've been before the Lord. And I said, Lord, I believe, and if that's what you want me to do, I'll receive. I don't need anybody to teach you. The Bible says you don't need man to teach you. You've got the Holy Spirit, the unction of the Holy Spirit that teaches you where you need no man to do that because if it don't come from God, you don't need it. And all this stuff are going, I said, and he went on, he was going, and then you just go into that, you let the, all the, and, and then you got the gift, you know. You can just, he just started off speaking right there, right off the bat with that, and then says, that's the movement of the Holy Spirit. As soon as I go doing that, you say, so if I can manifest it, this is the problem today, is people try to manufacture things. It's not just with the Pentecostal brethren, it's in the Baptist church. It's among us as Christians to be fake and phony and manufacture things that we don't have. It's like lifting up your hands and praising the Lord. Nancy, I don't want you to do that. God don't want you to do it if you don't mean it. There's no use trying to fake it. And nor is it if you're trying to fake going through praying or praising the Lord if it's not in you. If it's not in you, dear friend, you need to move in. You need to get excited. Find out what God has for you. Let him touch you and change your life because that's what God wants to do. Also, we need to move into his presence, not just prayer, praise, but by scripture reading. It's great to read your Bible. Amen. But not for a bragging thing. I read through my Bible this year. When you tell me that, and you probably won't tell me that after I tell you this. <laughs> I get myself in trouble so many times. I Praise the Lord. This is not like Sunday school speaking pins where you perfect attendance for 40 years and you get a pin every year you know and I commend that that's wonderful your attendance and things to do it but it's doing it for the right per se that you read through your Bible but my question would be what did you learn it's not a matter of reading through your Bible as it is to your Bible getting through to you it's more important that you can come into the face of one scripture, one verse, or a chapter, or whatever, as you're reading, because it is God speaking to you. God's Word. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I want to emphasize, this is the problem, rightly dividing the word of truth. And just like I shared with my brother that was misguided of the AG movement of the, the shuttle driver. 
I said, you know, this is the day, this is what happens that turns people away because you don't have to teach people to do something when it comes to that. And sure, we need to study, we need to learn, we can be taught in the scriptures and preaching. But when you try to impart like the gift of the Holy Spirit, no. That don't happen. Veer off, stay away. Understand, no, as 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says, try the spirits, know what sort they are or what they be. There's only one spirit of God. So be careful as you're getting into it. Because you see, we want to be so special. We want to, I got to have this gift to do this and that and, and to seem very special in your eyes. Listen, all that's important to me is to be special in the eyes of God. That's what's important to him, is to be special in his eyes. But not just in moving into his presence through reading the Bible, his scriptures. Memorization and meditation on the word of God. Everyone can memorize a verse. This, matter of fact, our text today would be a great verse to memorize. In Psalms 91 verse 1. But also meditation. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua writes, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous. Why read the scripture? Why meditate upon it? Because it will make your way prosperous. And then he says, You will have good success plenty of other scriptures, but not just through the script, prayer and praise and scripture reading and memorization and, and, and all the things, but through fellowship. This is where church comes in to the body of Christ. In Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. When you come into church, I just didn't feel the Lord's presence today. Well, then, that means you're isolated from that. I have been in some places, but I want to tell you something. If he is in you, and you understand God is everywhere, his power is greater in some places maybe than others because it's diminished by sin. And when we come into this place, remember, we're coming here to empty ourselves so he can fill us. And when we come, that we empty ourselves, we come to that place in fellowship together. Hebrews 10, verse 24, 25 says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, so much the more as you see the day approaching. And you'll notice there, let us consider one another. That is to have the regard and welfare of the other person, to endeavor to excite them to persevere in the Christian life, to be encouragers. But that word provoke, provoke unto love, we use that word provoke in a different way than what it's meant here in the scripture because provoke to us means to offend, to irritate, to incite, to incense, to do that. But in the original meaning in the Greek, it means to arouse or to excite, to call into action. When we excite other people, how do you excite other people to say, to go out and say, when a church is struggling, when you're struggling, to excite is to get all excited about it yourself. You can't help to, I guess, you can't help to get caught up into that, into the excitement of that, the momentum. It's like setting, um, I'm a, sorry about this, a UK basketball fan. Okay, I didn't get it. I come from Kentucky, so I bleed blue. Football, not so much, you know, but anyway. Kansas City Chiefs, yeah, go Chiefs, okay. Uh, 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 watch out now, because everybody else. Um, but, yeah, you get excited. You see these games, oh, my gosh, the games are close, and it's tough, and people get so excited, they're caught up in the And there's nothing like being there. Watching it on TV is one thing, but being Rupp Arena for U.K. basketball games, or I guess to be wherever you are into the things, and you see the closest, you see the battle, the things that's going on. I want to tell you something different. It is important to be in the house of God, to be engaged into the battle and enter to the place of worship and praise of the Lord. To be able to hear and to feel the presence of God within your life. So not only just moving in, we need to move into the dwelling place. Number two, move up. 
That second, the he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. It's a secret place. Only those who know Christ find it. An unbeliever who's an unconfessor will not find that secret place. Only those who confess their sins shall find it in Psalms 32, verse 5. The psalmist said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So only those that seek it will find it. To move up to say, I don't know where God is. I don't know. To move up, we've got to move in into Christ. That is our acceptance of Christ into our life, being born again, receiving him as our Savior, repentance and confession. So we move in. But to move up, he has promised unto us heaven. And this is a step of communion with him. The psalmist says in chapter 27, verse 8, when thou said, seek ye my face, my heart said, thy face, Lord, will I seek. When God calls for us to seek him, don't come to church looking for someone else. Come to see the Lord. Come looking to see the Lord. Come looking to hear from the Lord. What is God going to say? I remember oftentimes sitting out in the pew as you're sitting when I was running from the Lord, and I always wondered who told the preacher what I've been doing. Or some, but, but what was happening was God was speaking to me about things within my life. That really the preacher wasn't saying, but I thought he was. I, I was giving him credit for it, but really the Holy Spirit, God was saying through his word, things within my life that I knew where I was slack. I knew where I was drifting away from God and the things. So God was speaking to me, and I felt the pressure. I was feeling the conviction within my heart. And that would pull us away. But you see, God seeks us to have communion with him. Hebrews 4, verse 14 through 16 says, that we're, this is a step up to communion with God. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That simply means that Jesus feels your pain. He went through it here in this world in the flesh, and even now he's up there interceding for us, thank God, before the Father. Isn't that wonderful? He knows your struggles right now, how you are struggling as a child of God. And he knows what you're feeling, your struggles. And he said, so pray to him because we have a high priest that cannot be touched. Just like coming, if you was coming to talk to me as your pastor and preacher. And I say, you know, I just, I really feel. If you told me, you said, Brother Odell, I've lost a child. And then I could empathize with you. Most of the time, I would be sympathizing with you. I may not be able to relate to what you've experienced. I haven't experienced the same thing you've experienced. When I experience what you experience, I empathize with you, not just sympathize with you. And when I feel what you feel, and you see, Christ feels what we feel. He died on the cross for our sins. You and I are suffering in this world because of our sins. We're still in the flesh. We're still struggling. We have doubts and we have fears and we have anxieties. And what we've got to do is be honest with God. Go to the great high priest and express to him where you are within your life right now. What it is that you need. You need to take a move up step before the Lord. And you know it's the third thing. Last of all, we need to move under. Move in, move up, move under. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Notice this, dear friends. Did you notice under the shadow? He that dwelleth under the shadow is, is protected. God is our covering. And there's more protection for the person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. The writer of this psalm is, is attributed to Moses. Psalms 90-91 and they're going through the wilderness. And if you remember, God was a pillar of fire at night, and, and that was so they could see. And he was a cloud by day. And they were to follow this cloud. Stay in the shadow. Stay in the place, the presence of the Holy One. Can you envision this with me? I can because I remember but I didn't have the shadow to find. I wished I had. 
stepbrother of mine, and I'd, I'd never been to Louisville, and Dad remarried. And, and uh, he was younger than me, and he was from Louisville, Kentucky, and lived in housing projects and things. And I grew up on a farm coming, and we went up there for a get-together with my stepmother's family and decided to ride bicycles, go out through the projects. And uh, that rascal said something, hollered out something to a bunch of boys that was over on the project playing basketball on the projects as we were riding by. Next thing I know, we was in a chase. Not us chasing them. We were, we were, they had jumped on bicycles. He said something, some racial comment, and I don't have a racial bone in my body, but I can tell you, I, I didn't have time to stop and say, it wasn't me. But I mean, it just puts fear in you when you get chased by bullies or somebody else or whatever. People say things, do things. But you could envision with me a little fella just being chased by bullies all the way home from school. He's running, looking back, and, and they're chunking rocks. Some this sounds like the Christmas story, don't it, or something. And, and you go to the Christmas carol, and, and they're running, and the little fella, finally, he runs into the yard, and he runs. And, and, and all at once, he runs up into this shadow this giant shadow is his dad is standing on the steps of the house and and here comes the bullies and they look and the little feller's in the shadow now he's bold now he feels a lot better a lot protected and you know i think that's when we look at the scripture there to understand is that we come to that place to where we want to get into the under the shadow Coming to him because we have that protection. We, we have that covering. Our Heavenly Father is standing there. So we need to stay focused on being in the shadow of our God. If you're out of God's shadow, you're out too far. you got to have the covering. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. And may I say to you today, notice this, God will keep him her in perfect peace. What is peace to you? There's solitude that you feel that you're just at this point to do. So, in whose mind is stayed on thee. That if your mind is on God, if your mind is on Christ, David the psalmist said in Psalm 23 verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they protect me. You see, as we give our problems to the Lord, we will have peace when we come to that place. When we learn to be able to move in and to move up and to move under. God's covering. This Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Pray with me. Father, I just want to thank you for your presence today. And I thank you for your word as you've spoken to our hearts. And as you've looked on the pews here at the church and out in the TV world, the Facebook, the YouTube that folks will watch later. And as you're speaking to someone's heart that may be uh, sitting in an office somewhere and watching the service on a phone or an iPad or a computer. That as we look to you, Lord. We need that recall within our life to make our way back to you and into your presence. Moses continued to remind Israel of your covering, your protection, your guidance. And Lord, today that we feel we hear that and whatever needs to be done, be glorified today as folks come here privately or publicly at the altar or whatever as we surrender ourselves to you. Move in our midst today. Save that one is lost. Someone needs to rededicate their life, join the fellowship of this church. Lord, as you speak, we want to be in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stand with me, please, as we sing in our invitation this morning. As God speaks to your heart, I'd like to meet you right here at the front and pray with you. If that's God's will for your life, you come as we sing.
You're in the back of the church, the front, the middle. Time to move in. To move up. To move under. this altar. What's God saying to you? Come on. You just need to pray around this altar. Whatever God, just glorify Him. Lay it on this altar. Come on as we sing. What else? Someone else? I'll meet you right here through the front to this altar. Receive him and all of your darkness within. Within your heart here above. Last verse, unless someone else comes. He waited for me, aren't you? To Bless you all. To open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. So glad that you're here today. And let me just say, any time that as if, if we're as we're standing and and if and, and if you can't stand that's okay you can sing and worship as, or if you need to be seated anytime you can do that okay I'm just letting you know you know with I got bad knees and ankles myself you know and 
sometimes. So I'm just telling you, be comfortable in the house of the Lord. Be not too comfortable now. I like it better when you go out and say, Preacher, you sure stepped on my toes today. And I'll tell you, I, well, I missed my mark. I was aiming for your heart to do it. But I hope you've been touched by the Lord today. Have you? Amen. Lord bless you. Amen. Well, Miss Deborah, oh, let me say one thing. If you check the table out there for your Christmas cards and pick them up, if you out there see if your name is out there, there'll be a stack of cards. People, we do this thing of putting Christmas cards and saving postage stamps and donating that to foreign missions uh, for the postage stuff. So uh, people put money in for that. So you, our church family. So I hope check the table out there and pick up your Christmas cards as you leave today. OK, Miss Deborah. So if you are part of the Christmas baskets putting together, Miss Linda would like for you to stay over just for a few minutes immediately after service, correct? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Now go out and tell everybody about the Lord. Have a great week.